uh, I'll say a few words. Well, I'll begin Dario's talk, and then he'll continue. So, okay, now we are kind of the finishing line. So, okay, not finishing line, maybe just beginning. So we are actually, uh, okay, so we're, starting to, we're now starting to build this bridge between the geometric side and the spectral side. So, unfortunately, I'm not on top of Dario's notation. Dario yesterday introduced the extended Whitaker category. And did you also introduce explicitly the non-extended category? No. All right. So Dario introduced a certain <coughs> stack, Q extended. And it had, so let me remind you what it was. So it's the moduli space of triples. So it's a, it's a principal G bundle. And so for this talk, G, to simplify matters, G will be adjoined. So it's a principal G bundle. And so in the next, the following data is defined only generically. So, so it's, it's on, well, kind of S times X, and the rest will be on a domain U. So what do we have on the domain U? We have a Borel reduction. Um, P to the Borel, okay, let me call it reduction PB, and the following datum for each simple root, you consider this line bundle, it's a line bundle also defined over U, and well, you map it to the canonical bundle. So this is the data. So um, the it's it's this is over you. Okay. So yeah, reduction over you. Yeah. So the, all of this is over you. Okay, so now I'm forgetting how he phrased this. Yeah. Okay, now I'm forgetting how exactly he set it up. So let me just remember. Okay, so so then uh, so we considered. So let me just say that inside Q, Qx, there is Q. And this is defined by the condition that these maps are all isomorphisms, again, over U. These maps are defined over U and are required that they be isomorphisms. How, what was the notation for these maps, Daria? Yeah. Gammas. Gamma. So, so um, gamma i's isomorphisms. All to be all non-zero. It's the same. You can shrink u, and then they'll become non-zero. All right. So now, so we introduced. So let me. I'll change notation slightly. It's the width of wh. What what did you use? So there'll be. The category WH global extended. It's the full subcategory inside D mod <coughs> Q extended. And there is not extended. It will be kind of the corresponding subcategory living over kind of this open subset. So let me recall the definitions. So, okay. Um, so definitions went like as follows. It's a category. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not global section of anything. It's just a category. All right. So let me just briefly recap how the definition went. So um, so we have this round version of the Grassmannian. 
uh, times the space that Dario uh, denoted uh, characters. And uh, there was a superscript op for open, O. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Um, and so this space has a map. So this maps to Q, and this maps to Q extended. So let me recall who these guys were. So, so I'm erasing these important lemmas, OK? I hope people OK, so the round version of the Gassmannian is the familiar thing. So, so, well, what is it? So a map from it here from S to this guy is, first of all, what? It's a map from S to, round, to the round space. So IE, we fix uh, a finite set of maps from S to the curve. So in other words, so we have x1, xn are finitely many maps from x to the curve. Then you have the G bundle on S times x. And you have the trivialization of this G bundle away from the union of the graphs of these maps. Xi. However, it's not trivialization, but uh, the identification with this standard guy. Is, was, it, was that it? Standard, yeah. This omega. Uh, well, that's what happens. But the omega sign in the, in the CH. Uh, so the Grismanian is as is? Oh, and those guys were just sections. And those guys were just sections of the. OK. OK, so this is the. Sorry, I'm just didn't follow exactly the notations. OK, so this is the Grassmannian. And now let me tell you. Oh, wait, so what is PG0? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I. Yeah, so a PG0 is that trivial bundle. And um, so let me tell you what this ch is. So it also lives over the round space. So home from S to Ch is, well, again, it's a point, so a finite collection of points, S points of X. And then, uh, so it's for each alpha, for each <coughs> vertex of the Jenkins diagram, it's um, Okay, section of omega OS box times omega x, again, over the same open subset. And so it's section, and ch with a 0 is when these sections are <coughs> isomorphisms. Pardon? Don't you want to, if you want to really come on, don't you want to twist it by some one dimensional space? Uh, to twist who? What? Twist this OS and the X by one additional. I mean, the question is where you're choosing a basis, uh, like where you're choosing root vectors. Uh, oh, come on. I chose my root vectors. Yeah, yeah. So, like, alpha i's are chosen pinning for your group. Um, OK, so this is the chim. So now, what's the map? Um, what's this map? Well, okay. So let me just okay. Let me just say this map. So what I so what I have so I have a point of here. I have to produce a point of Q X. So who is the G bundle? Well, that's your G bundle. It's already given. So now I have to give you uh, a reduction to B. It's an open subset. First of all, I have to say who's the domain. The domain is just S times X. You remove the the graphs. That's your domain. So now I have to give you the reduction to B. Well, over this domain, we just don't have a reduction to B. We have the full trivialization. The bundle is trivialized. That's your reduction. In particular, it gives the reduction to B. OK, so now I have to give this gammas. 
OK. So because I have the trivialization, well, the B bundle was trivial. So these guys are, these are O, the trivial bundles. So I have to map O's to these guys, and this is, this is these maps. So this is, this is, this is given by CH. So CH supplies us the gammas. OK. <clears throat> All right, so we've got this picture. I'm just recapping Darius' lecture. I think Darius' lecture is kind of, that was one of the central lectures. So maybe not such a bad time investment. All right, so now let me recap. Yeah, so, that, so claim is that at all locally, so you see, U's are up to equivalence. Yes. The claim is that not at all, even the risky locally, no, FPPF locally. Uh, any U can be shrunk to, uh, to be contained in one of these. Easy lemma. So FPPF, okay, not, I, mean, I don't remember who must be shrunk currently. FPPF locally, any U is equivalent to one like this. Yeah, uh, FPPF locally on S. FPPF is, what is it? Fidel Monpla, presentation fini. Okay, final presentation. All right, um, so now who are the categories? So, the, well, again, it's a full subcategory here. Let me call, uh, Terry, what was the notation for this map? Q. So, um, well, so here's the definition. So with uh, W globe extended, it's a full subcategory in D mod uh, defined by the following condition. So here you have this pullback functor Q upper shriek goes to D mods on the affine Grassmannian run over run with ch. And here, well, you have the following subcategory. And so this is this subcategory is the main character today. Um, well, let me just first. So it was n of k chi equivariance. So the point is that, so as Dario hopefully explained yesterday, so this, there's the round version of n of k that acts on the round version of the Grassmannian, and a point of ch defines your character of this n of k, and therefore it makes sense to consider the equivariant category with respect to n of k against this kind of variable character. And again, because n of k is a union of unipotent groups, this is a full subcategory. And so this is defined as those objects here, which under the pullback functor fall into here. Chi equal evaluation. Yeah, okay, let me just, okay, so that's the, okay, so, so this was what happened yesterday, and now I'll, I'll erase the x. Okay, and this is, this is the kind of not extended Whitaker category. Okay, so, Pardon? Yeah. OK, so, so the goal of today's lecture is to actually relate this category to something that's happening on, the, on this Galois side. And for this, we'll have to rewrite this category a tiny bit. OK, so uh, Okay, now I'm forgetting how it was done. So, Dario, how do you pass to the uh, a particular character? How? I fix it, and then I need to divide by the stabilizer rational. But, but the torus. Oh, did you do the torus yes, torus equivariance yesterday? No. All right. Um, 
Yeah. Okay, just one second. So it's a slight mismatch in our. Uh, let me see how to do this. <coughs> All right. Just one second, let me just... Okay, so let's do one more manipulation. Okay. Okay, let me d define the main local character and then we'll see that the two are equivalent. Uh, the gammas were isomorphisms. Okay. So, did you introduce an omega? Yeah. Where are your heading? Okay. So I. <clears throat> I won't introduce the factorizable Whittaker category and say that this guy embeds into this factorizable Whittaker category, the global section of the factorizable Whittaker category. The slight problem that I'm, kind of it's, I'm so facing a linguistic problem here. Why this uh, upper left corner doesn't produce a For, yeah, like it's, The problem is very stupid because this ch is not a factorizable gadget. Yeah, I'm just I, I'm I'm just trying to th to say how to, to fix the notation the kind of least confusing way. So let me define the factorizable category. And um, pardon me. Oh, pardon? An omega. I mean, so it's. Oh yeah, let me do it. Do it. Okay, so. I'll introduce a slightly different character than will related to this one. So I'll introduce a slightly twisted version of the affine Grassmannian mega. So what we do is this. So Grassmannian is what? It's a G bundle, which is generically isomorphed to the trivial bundle. Instead of the trivial bundle, we have another fixed bundle. So namely, consider rho. It's the usual rho. It's half sum of positive roots that goes into G, well, the team, and hence to G. And <clears throat> consider rho of omega. So this is a T bundle. And hence a G bundle. So and let me denote it um, instead of P0, it'll be P omega. So it'll, well, PG omega is, is this induced G bundle. So my new Grassmannian will be not trivializing, but will be kind of comparing it to this. All right. And this spin structure is everywhere. So it's, it's a good point. So. No, ro row is row. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, the row is row. The problem is that like if G was not a joint, row might not be a co character. Then you have to. It'll be two row of omega ha uh, square root of omega. All right. So. So now you consider. Okay. So 
you consider this Grassmannian. And now, so instead of n of k, this will be group n omega of k acting with this. Let me tell you what n omega is. Uh, so what's n? n is automorphisms of the trivial n bundle. So n omega is automorphisms of, well, this p omega b, I'm considering as a b bundle, that, are, that induce the identity automorphism of, well, the T bundle. Again, if the. I was supposed to do all of this over the run space. No, so this is, this is a, if you wish, kind of. No, this is, if you, well, this is a group scheme over, this is a group scheme over your curve. Then I'll took jets into it. I'm just defining group scheme of the curve. So before you had the group scheme, which was just n. And I think of it as automorphisms of the trivial n bundle, which is the same as automorphisms of the trivial b bundle, which induce the identity automorphisms of the induced t bundle. And now I do the same thing, but with, with this particular guy. And so now, from, from this, it's clear that this acts on this. So why, why do I bother with this omega? Is because when I, when I take neuromorphic jets, it has a canonical character. So that, that, that's why I'm doing this omega thing. So and now, <coughs> and now I'll do the round version. So we can consider, well, I claim that the following, we have the following factorization category. We have D modules on this slightly twisted version of the Grassmannian, equivariant against, well, neuromorphic jets into this K, against the canonical character. We have the canonical character specifically because of our choice of omega. So the point is that, well, I think that was explained by Dario. No? The residues do it for you. OK, so this is a, a factorization category. What I mean is that for every, so for every finite set i, you, ha you have the corresponding category living over xi derom. All right. So, yeah. So instead of n of k invariants, it's n, n of omega k invariants. It's it's kind of like here, but. And so it's specifically the choice of this twist that kind of gives you the canonical character there. All right, so okay, so we have this factorization category in particular. So let me well, I call this category just W H to be di distinguished with this W H glob, and we'll now comment on the relationship between the two. So it's a factorization category. In particular, you have W H run. So it is a sections over the run space, well, the run, I don't know, of WH. So now I want to do, well, a tiny bit of structure that has, well, was supposed to be discussed before, but we never, never did it. It's the unitality. So a tiny, tiny digre digression. No. WH glob? On, on WH, on the, on the no, I don't want to put the omega because it's kind of that is the WH. But same as the, in the other lecture. Uh, what other lecture? Dario's lecture? Yes. No. So okay. So dub. So I'm divert. I'm departing from W. So dub, Dario denoted WH. What I denote WH glob. And so I will now compare WH with WH. WH globe with WH run, they will be almost equivalent up to something that's called unital structure, which I'll now explain. The unital structure is important anyway. It's like you might wonder even why didn't we discuss it before. So here is what I mean by the unital structure. Let me give an example first. So consider the fine Grassmannian, well, our 
our favorite factorization category, forget all kinds of equivariants, just define Grassmannian. But note that kind of you have the following additional structure. You can consider the affine Grassmannian over a finite set i, but say you take union i and j. So this lives over x to the i union j, but I claim that <clears throat> you have these maps. It's kind of the unit section along j. Do you guys see what I mean? So this classified bundles equipped with a trivialization away from I union J. And this classified bundle is equipped with a trivialization over I. In particular, if you have a trivialization over I, you can extend the trivialization away from I union J. So it's the unit section. Kind of, I'm not, at these extra points, I'm not doing anything. So, so this is what's called the unital structure on the factorization space, which is the affine Grassmannian. So, and so now if you take this categories, D modules on Grassmannian I union J, and here we have D modules on, let me call it Grassmannian I, well, I'll specifically write it tensor D modules X to the I to the J, which is the same as D modules of the product. These categories are related by, let me call it delta function, delta IJ. So these two categories are related by a pair of adjoint functors. So here we have the left adjoint, which is direct image, Duran, and Schrick pullback. Sorry. So this is the structure you get in the affine Grassmannian. OK, let me just axiomatize it more generally. Um, I'm skipping between, between these two boards because I want to keep this. I apologize for that. Yeah. New WHS, we just theorized. Yeah. I mean, it seems that the analog of the upper left It's not analog. It'll be, it'll be almost equivalent up to this unitality that I'm not explaining. So just note that, see, this is a global thing. This was a full subcategory in this that felt the global geometry of the curve, right? It was defined as a full subcategory of Q. It was defined using the affine Grassmannian, but it sits inside Q. The other guy was kind of, it was sections of a factorizable category of the round space. Yeah, it did not feel the rational functions. If you I'll do it. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So for example, as San is re pointing out, suppose my group is one. So then this is nothing. This is just vect. Because Q is just point. Whereas the uh, width is d modulus on run. Width run, wh run, is d modulus on run. So the affine Grassmannian is point, but it's spread over the round space, so I get the demodulus on run. So that will be the difference. The difference between the WH glob and WH run will turn out to be just, I have to, some kind of mod out by demodulus on the round space itself. And because the round space is contractible, it'll be an innocuous operation. I won't be doing much. OK. Um, yeah, so let me just in general, set up what I mean by unitality. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, this will fully faithful embed into this. Ju let me just go there. So let me just say, so this unitality structure is explained in notes for Sam's talk on the third day. So let's I, well, let's C be factor, factorization category. i.e. an assignment for every finite set i. So it's a category. Well. Acted on by d modulus and x to the i. So the unitality structure is the following. It's for every i and j, you have a functor d mod Uh, 
how do you write it? Uh, x to the i tensor Cj will go to C i union j. Let me call this functor unit i and j, and we also require this, this functor have a right adjoint. So the demodulus of the fine Grassmannian, um, give an example of, of such a thing. And so, and when you impose the Whittaker condition, you also, well, kind of, the Whittaker category inherits the structure. So for example, this right adjoint, well, it suffices to say who the right adjoint is, and it's, well, it's just given by restriction along the same map. Just the Whittaker condition restricts to the Whittaker condition. Is that okay? Yeah? Even, are you? Mm -hmm. All right. And so, of course, you need to put some compatibility conditions with factorization and restrictions, and, but it's kind of easy to see what they are. All right, so now, um, so, so if you have a unital, well, uh, factorization category, you can, there are two things you can do. Well, you can forget it was unital and consider its sections of the run space, but inside, you can, well, figure out, well, there will be another category endowed with a forgetful functor, but this forget forgetful functor will be um, fully faithful because of the, um, because of the um, contractibility of the run space. So let me tell you what this category is. So let me, let's recall who, who this is. So this is, well, it's a, the objects here are compatible families of objects in each CI. So it's for every I, we have little CI inside capital CI, such that, well, for every surjection of finite sets, let me say I prime surjecting onto I, if I consider this diagonal, um, x to the I embedding into x to the I prime, uh, what do we have? So, unital, uh, usual. So, well, there is functor from uh, C i prime. So there's a functor that goes like this from C i prime to C i, this restriction functor that Sam explained. And what we need is that we need to supply isomorphisms between Ci prime and little ci. So these objects are compatible under these restriction maps. So this is just the usual run. And now run independent will put an extra kind of set of um, compatibility conditions and these read as follows. What I need, so I consider this unit ij right adjoint and so when I evaluate it on this object cij I need to identify it with the following. So it will be Cj tensor, well, the dualizing. It will be these guys. So basically, I'm saying that, OK, so that's the definition. Um, let me just say what it means for the affine Grassmannian in that particular case. Um, and you'll see why I call it independent. So what I have, so I have these D modules Fi on this affine Grassmannian I, and now I have this, well, delta functions maps. So I have x to the i t times Grassmannian j, goes to the Grassmannian I union J. So this, this is my de delta function. So, and what I require is that if I pull back this guy, what I get is, well, omega x to the I times what I had on J. So what's the meaning? The meaning is this, that can I, when I insert an extra point at which nothing is happening, I want that it does, well, kind of nothing is happening to my sheaf, to my D module. Yeah, so again, like, 
So how should you think of a demodulin on the run version of the fine Grassmannian? I give you n points x1, xn, and it, at them I have, well, the fine Grassmannians. And, well, any such collection I attach, well, there is a sheaf uh, D module on this product. But now, so what this independent condition is, says is the following. Suppose I throw in an extra point, but I, but there I only consider not the entire Grassmannian, but the, only the unit point of the affine Grassmannian. So I want kind of that, the value of my, so the restriction of my D module to this extra point that it does not change. So like, so it only feels the point of the fine grass mind, but something is happening. Do you, see, do you see the idea? OK, so this is the independent category. So now, with these definitions, let me state the proposition, and I'll sketch the proof in a moment, that WH glob is WH, as defined up there, run independent. So that is the relationship. Yeah, and I should say that this functor is fully faithful. Again, it's, it requires proof, but it ultimately it follows from the contractibility of the fine of, of the run space. So, uh, Can you say just that the run space is a monoid? And uh, that's what Daria wanted to say, but I prevented him from doing so. That's exact. That's exactly what it is. It's just a fancier way of saying that. Pardon? The same can be phrased as run space a monoid that acts on the run version of the Grassmannian. And you impose the equivariance with respect to this monoid. That's what this run independent is. And because this monoid is contractible, the embedding of this category is, is fully faithful. Well, the unit, so the unitality structure on your category, it, what it really is, it allows the monoid of demodulus on the run space. So because the run space is a monoid, demodulus on the run space is a monoidal category. And it, what it, the unitality structure is just equivalent to having this monoidal category act on the run version of your category. That, that's what it is. And then you, you impose the equivariance. Good question, but are, these are the same because the categories are dualizable. If you remember Sam's talk, like for every action, there is a coaction passing through the dual functors, so it's the same. And like impose equivariance by like this totalization, imposing equivalences, that's be this, that will be the same as uh, taking the tensor product. So it's again this limit versus co limit game. Yeah, yeah. All right, so. Um, Pardon me? Why, why I needed the twisting? So, um, let's just do one point, Yashk. So, let's so consider, so I'm considering D modules on the Grassmannian at one point with this omega. So, first of all, okay. So I needed twisting here in order to have the twisting here. Like to have this group act on the Grassmannian, I needed to twist the Grassmannian as well. Okay. So the so what I really so the place where I really needed to twist it in is here. So I claim that it's the twisting that allows you to have the canonical character. So let me explain why. Okay. So what what's the canonical character? Well, I'm at one point. So okay, let's consider so this following homomorphism and mod the uniposed radical. Uh, omega of k. Now, what is this? Well, this is the product of copies of GA, but because of the twistings, these are no, no longer GAs of k. This will be kind of omega kx. So these will be the differentials on the, on the local field, and then I, take, then I can take canonically the residues. <laughs> that, that's why. All right. So honestly speaking, I should give you the proof of this. But let's do it in the kind of question time. It's not very difficult, but I think it'll be kind of tedious now. So we'll switch to another mode. And what Dario will do, 
just believe this, you know, that's, it's pretty tautological here. What Dario will do. Any unital, for any unital factorization category. Yeah, like as soon as you trivialize the differentials, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's a good idea to put this twist. Okay, so believe this proposition for a second. Um, and what Dario will do, so all of this will go away. So, and let me, let me remind, so here we have this functor of, okay, so we have this also D modulus of Bungi. So Dario defined the functor of extended Whitaker coefficient. It went from D modulus of Bungi to the extended Whitaker global category, but you can, well, you can restrict it to the open part, restrict the open part Q of Q extended, let's call this functor just coefficient. Well, the extended one was conjecturally fully, fully faithful, so this is not fully faithful, but we have this functor. Now, this is equivalent to this, and this, as we said, embeds into W run. So what Dario will do now, he will take this factorization category W as a factorization category, and he will now connect it to something that happens on the spectral side. So this is the first time we're actually forming, kind of, that's the first time we're forming this passage from, um, from the automorphic to the Galois. So that, maybe this is the first time that something is happening <laughs> of this, what, kind of, second time. Hmm? Sataki was not yet it. Sataki was the acting objects, acting agents. But this time we're really trying to connect that something that comes from D of Bungie to something that comes from, so let me just even say, so it will be rep G check, regarded as a factorization category as defined by Sam. So here we have D modules on Bungie with this functor of coefficient. And here we have this quasi-co, a specific quasi-co nodal in co, and this is this functor of co-localization as was defined by Nick. And so again, we are, at the end of the day, these will be related and um, to make this diagram commutative. Pardon? Ah, wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Just one second, let me, just, let me just clarify. So it will be equivalence of factorization categories, in particular to the equivalence of the wrong versions. Yeah, please. Not reductive. Yeah, uh, you're kind of not using anything about your group, and on the left somehow you're using you're doing some kind of Whittaker stuff, which is kind of, which makes uh, this kind of asymmetric. At the same time, yesterday you told us that somehow something like Whittaker uh, does appear on the local system side as well. For example, if you want to compute where where the constant D module goes, you say that somehow this some sort of Whittaker stuff appears. So can, can you somehow make it similar? Wait a second, that sounds too cool. So say that again. <laughs> Just so say the whole thing again. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. slowly, yeah. three well, times. This diagram, this, this diagram somehow looks strange to me because it's kind of very asymmetric. Because somehow on the on the right, you're you're doing some kind of in some sense tautology. You're doing something which makes sense for any algebraic group. You're not using anything about the structure of your group. No. At the same time, on the left, you're using uh, you, you're embedding into local category uh, somehow uses very much the structure of your group. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and and this kind of I mean. This is state, sentence number one, which is a whole thing too strange. At the same time, yes, this is something which uh, we can do less, less strange. Uh, and then you say that somehow this whole thing is somehow, in the end of the day, knows about something like Whittaker, uh, something like Whittaker construction appears on G check side as well. So, for example, when you compute the image of the quantum yeah. module, then. Yeah, See, okay, so the last thing I, I will not be able to comment on because I don't understand it. But so, okay, let me just, okay, let, okay, let's, let me have this digression because it's a, it's a very important remark. So, yeah, okay, so, okay, so let's, okay, fantasy world will move to the quantum setting. In that quantum setting, you have twisted D modules on Bungie, 
and this will be they'll be equivalent to also twisted demodules, no, no longer local systems, bungee check. But the Langlands dual twisting. So now, well, again, when kappa goes to zero, critical, this goes to infinity, and this degenerates to local systems. So now, what you're saying, we're doing nothing, this localization called localization, what does it come down to? Well, not, well, it's degeneration of the kajdan lustig localization that we talked about yesterday. So here will be kajdan lustig category, well, for the Langlands dual at the corresponding level, and it's, well, related by a pair of adjoint functors log g, well, call log g. So again, what, g check, g check. So when you, when you take the level, this level to infinity, this, this will be, be that. So you can, you can call it doing nothing or doing something, but that's what it is. And again, that makes sense for now. This, this is still doing nothing. This is still doing nothing. It makes sense for an algebraic group. That makes sense for an algebraic group. Algebraic group, it's like this basic operation of localization of the kajdan lustig category. So, and here we have this conjectural Langlands. And note that you, you don't have an analog of this in number theory. What is this kajdan lustig localization? It's like some kind of conformal blocks. Who knows what it is? But here we'll have the same Whitaker G run. And so this is functor of coefficient, and this is the functor of, well, as Joseph told me, this is called Poincare series, right? It's like summing up with the Whitaker function. It was, uh, okay, it's left adjoint. It's a coefficient of Poincare series. And so, and then, okay, so now this is Lurie's equivalence. So Lurie says that kajdan lustig for G check is Whitaker for G. And so the basic structure of Langlands correspondence is that it, it swaps Whitaker on one side with, Ka with Kajdan Lustig on the other side. And, and see, this Whitaker thing is something familiar in number theory. So if you take K to be integral, well, it's kind of, it has direct analog in number theory, whereas this is tautological. And kind of this is what, this is, this is number theory, this is conformal field theory, and get, they get swapped by Langlands correspondence. No, but, but, but it's what? It's swaps doing, doing something no, with doing nothing. Yeah. So, but now you can do the same. You can do K L G. You have with G check at the corresponding levels, and the diagram is symmetric. So, can you do this on this board? Yeah, and that's what. So what I said, when we'll hit so this diagram, start yeah, so the stop with Opers, so Opers is exactly. But that means that on the left, you're supposed to be able also to do nothing. There should be a version of the diagram. You know, but that's, we'll do this nothing, we'll do this, it's the cardan lustig localization. This cardan lustig localization that I talked about yesterday, it's this and it corresponds to Opers. So Opers is, Opers is exactly the degeneration of Whitaker at level infinity. Of what? Uh, like this? So this functor, at, this will be uh, Nick's talk. No, I'm talking about functor in the opposite direction. Um, so it'll be, so th there's a functor. It is fully faithful when restricted to the modules on, on any open, sub, any quasi compact open of Bungie. So it will not be fully faithful in general. But if you take any quasi-compact open, J lower star from it. Yeah, so it'll, yeah. So, so it's like, it doesn't work perfectly, kind of non, so the analytic problems. This is, can you prove from the very beginning? Then. What? So this is your proof for any group? What? That this is for the first one. Yeah, it's even so written. So, 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 so why, why did you choose to talk about one version of the other side and not the other? Because of the technical difficulties, because I, I can much better control the Whitaker model, geometric Whitaker model, than the Opers. See, this is again, this is again, excellent question. So this is ex the degeneration of infinity of this of this diagram. You just so here I'm ultimately doing with D modules on uh, pre-stacks of locally finite type, and here I have to deal with 
int co of infinite type, I just I don't understand it as well. So that's But see, there's no, but there's no full symmetry. See, it's Kajdan Lustig at k. It's Whitaker at negative one over k. Yeah, something different. So somehow you could try to find the equivalence now in two different ways, right? So you have two embeddings of the local categories, then you probably Yeah. So you can dualize this, and it'll, it will, you can dualize this diagram, and it will go to the same diagram, well, up to some Cartan involution. Yeah, so So what do you mean? So, so to find this equivalence in two different ways. And it'll be the same. And, and, and show that it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. So indeed, there's a full equ Again, Opers is Whitaker in the spec on the Galois side. So, but you initially asked a different question. You said that, so there's a constant sheaf here. No, but that, I thought no, no, no. Now I think I got No, no, no. It was not, it was not an Opery thing. It was something, it's a very, it was a very, very different thing. So I, that I don't have interpretation of. So there is something else going on that happens to do with a constant sheaf here. And that's, that's something I don't, I don't have an understanding of. So if you use this kind of other... No, that's not going to help. You don't see no, because like, so this part, so for example, it's already kind of more technical. So this part of the diagram does not feel the in, int co correction. Like when you go to Opus, you only hit quasi co. And like you can do this critical localization, you only hit what's called the tempered part of the category. So, and that part, this constant sheet was kind of constant sheet. Means that you just need to define what is extended. Uh, no, no, that will not help. I don't think it will help. So, I'm saying that there's something more going on which I don't understand. Did that answer your question? All right, so uh, maybe let's have maybe a 10 minutes break and then Dario will do this comparison.